Friends, I am so excited to sh Oh, squeaky. Okay, I'm not gonna. Friends, friends, friends. Today we are making one of the favorite things that I've ever made. It is a matching set for sweatpants and top. Cozy, cute, everything you can want. Easy to make. I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. I have two different print versions, the one that I made for the tutorial and my first one that I made, which is the Nightmare Before Christmas version. And honestly, I love both. I'd love to hear in the comments which one you prefer, the Nightmare Before Christmas or just like the plain black with the gold. If you wanna make one for yourself, follow along. I'm telling you, you can do this thing. Okay. First, I'm gonna go through some tips, things that I did differently, what patterns I used, etc., etc. Then I'm actually gonna show you like what I did. If you're a visual learner and you don't wanna follow just the written direction, I've also provided that. Yeah! So here we go. So the two different companies I used for this outfit are Tilly and the Buttons. Oh. I used their Nora top. And then I also used Studio Rosado, I think is how you say oh. it. And they're an Etsy company. Honestly, I just scoured the web for this sweatpants that I was picturing in my head. And they were joggers, they had a certain waist, and I was like, okay, I want them to look a certain way. And I found this pair of sweatpants that I was like, yes, that is the look I want. I was very nervous because I think Etsy patterns can be very hit or miss. Glad I took this risk because they turned out amazing. They had great customer service, like I messaged um, the woman who makes all the patterns and she helped me with all my questions. Both patterns I used were PDF patterns. So if you're not familiar with patterns, that means you can print it at home. It is gonna come out on your computer paper and you get to tape the whole thing together. I feel mixed about PDF patterns because helicopter, someone's car alarm, there was a tow truck that was just practicing, I guess, like backing up. Okay. about PDF patterns because like, oh, I love that I like find something and I can print it that day and start the project. But when I'm taping it together, I'm annoyed because it's taking me forever. <laughs> so it doesn't even take that long. It probably takes like 20 minutes, 30 minutes to tape together a pattern. But like, I want that 20, 30 minutes back in my life and I just rather have it printed on paper. So you print it out on your computer. They're gonna give you the directions. Both patterns that I give you are gonna give you very clear directions on how to do that. My neighbor just walked past and I felt embarrassed. <laughs> My door's open so they could hear everything I said. I'm like not embarrassed of the internet, just my neighbors. <laughs> so the changes that I made to the original patterns are pretty small, which is why I think this is a great beginner project. I literally kept the sweatpants exactly the same, except she told me the sweatpants were designed for five foot six. Well, I'm five foot four. She said that my waistband might ride a little higher than I want it to. I think I took an inch and a half off and it sits like perfectly. So that was all because of her kind of guidance. For the Tilly and the Buttons top, I have two different versions. Both of them are cropped, but one of them I do like a split seam and I also made the top longer so I could tuck it in. In my first version, my Nightmare Before Christmas, I literally just made the front and the back the same exact length and that was an easier thing to do. So if you're just looking for the easy way, definitely recommend that. If you make this, please comment down below, let me know or even better, follow me on Instagram and send me the picture of what you made on Instagram. I would love to see it. Scroll, 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 scroll. So I think that's everything. So I'm just gonna show you step-by-step step what I did. So uh, follow along. So I'm starting from the point of having the pattern already taped together. I think they do a really great job of showing you how to do this. It's pretty self-explanatory, like a kindergartner puzzle, so. But this one you can see goes together with these little triangles and numbers and letters. I also wanted to point out, you can see if you want it cropped, you can actually cut it at that line there. So don't forget about that, save yourself some fabric. And with the pants pattern, it's a little different. They fit together, you just follow the lines, you cut out on these little scissor lines, and then you just match up the lines so they fit perfectly. Both are pretty easy. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist because this thing is just huge and it's awkward. I store it like way behind my desk and I have to pull the whole thing out every time. Okay, so we're gonna first put the salvages together. If you don't know what that is, the salvage is like the factory made edge, not the edge that they're gonna cut at the fabric store. So the salvage is the long edge you're seeing here and that short edge is the one that they actually cut along. So you just wanna make sure you fold it correctly. 
So first I'm just making sure the grain line is even as you can see measuring uh, on both sides. There we go. There we go. Okay, now I know my leg is going to cut straight on the fabric And I do the same thing on the other side and then I cut it out. I don't have enough weights So sometimes I use other household objects to weight down the paper now that my pant legs are cut out I am removing that inch or inch and a half from the top since I'm not five foot six and I don't want my waist to end up too high so I lay out the rest of the pants pieces. Some need to be caught in the fold, so always make note of that. And then I also need to remove that inch or inch and a half from the top of both the pocket pieces so they'll line up correctly with the pants. Then I follow all the same rules for the top. Uh, just ignore that square there. That's supposed to be caught in the fold. I placed that wrong. So we're gonna start with the front leg panel and also the front pocket panel. Uh, they're both labeled accordingly if you get confused. And then you're gonna do right sides together like so, matched up. And then I'm gonna add some pins and sew along this line here. Hooray! So now we fold that piece back. You can see wrong side of the fabric now against the wrong side. And we're gonna stitch right there along that line, a top stitch. You can see it makes like a decorative line for where the pocket's gonna be. Now I take the back panel for the pocket and I'm actually gonna flip the leg around so I'm getting this viewpoint. And I'm lining that up. See how it perfectly lines up with the pocket? Yeah, I line up, line up those little, <laughs> line up those little round corners and then I'm adding pins to the top just to secure. Flip the leg over and you can see, look, it kind of juts out there and you'll see your pocket start to form. I'm just adding extra pins so it stays in place and then you're gonna stitch all around. And just to make sure it's super clear, I showed you this other example on the other pant leg. Again, you're just gonna stitch all the way around and you'll start to see your pocket. So next, I forgot to mark these little notches in the fabric, so I'm actually just laying the pattern on top of the fabric and finding these little marks at the top and marking them with pins. You just wanna make sure you line it up correctly. You now take one of the pins and place it on top of the other pin, creating a little pleat. The pattern will show you which way to move the pin so you know you're creating the pleat in the right direction. And now you're just gonna secure it. And you're gonna stitch on the top here. Just to clarify, you are not pleating all the pocket pieces, just that top layer of fabric. And stitch across. To make sewing the pants easier, we're just gonna make a little stitch right here. It's that corner edge of the pocket, attaching it to the side of the pants. Now we are taking the back pants piece and finally attaching it to the front. So we're gonna start uh, making something that looks like a pant leg. You're gonna start with the outside, see how I'm lining it up? You're gonna pin that, stitch, and then press and trim the seam allowances. There's our handiwork. Look at that pocket, I love it. Okay, so now we're just gonna connect, connect the crotch on the inside of the leg. There we go, pin that press it and then trim again. Once you've done that to both pant legs, you are going to put them right sides together. You can see they're both like little tubes and you're gonna put one tube inside of the other tube, line up those seams. So this is the inseam, the one that's like right at the bottom of the crotch. Ugh, hate that word. And see how they kind of line up when you place them right sides together? So just take some time, line them up. I find the top of the pants and then I'm going to pin the whole uh, crotch all the way to the front to the back. And then I'm gonna sew and press it and trim those seam allowances again. Wow, it created real pants, except these would fall off you because there's no waistband, but they sure look snazzy already. So next we're gonna make our waistband, the front and the back piece. We're going to attach them at the sides. So stitch along the side and stitch along the side. Again, trimming your seam allowances and pressing. All done, you're gonna fold that in half. That creates a little spot for the elastic to go. So you're gonna wrap the elastic around your waist and pin it how like tight you want it to be. Then I measure that where I pin with a tape measure and I always write it down on the top of my pattern so I remember for next time what measurement I liked if I end up loving it. So you're just gonna stitch the elastic together. Now you've got a loop for the elastic and you can see the waistband's a little bit bigger than the elastic. That's okay, that's part of the process. You're going to insert the elastic. I like to use pins so that the elastic would just 
stay inside of it. It kept wanting to pop out. Um, but when you sew it, you're actually not gonna sew the elastic at all. You're just gonna catch the edge of the waistband to basically encapsulate, is that a word? <laughs> the elastic. Also, looks good. Now we're going to attach it to the top of the pants. So you're going to stick the pants inside the waistband like so, and you're going to take the raw edge of the pants and attach it to the stitch line you just made, like the raw edge of the waistband. You can see I'm lining up the side seams first of both the side seams of the waistband and the side seam of the pants. Then I'm finding the center of the waistband by folding it, there we go, and I'm gonna put that right in line with the center seam of the pants. So this is how we line it up. Here we go, we're doing the same thing in the back so that it's even. I just continue doing that around the whole waistband, evening it out, adding some pins, and then we're just gonna stitch connecting the waistband to the pants around that edge. Again, not catching the elastic. You might need to stretch the elastic a bit while you're sewing so that your knit fabric lays fat, fat, flat. Sorry, everyone. And yeah, then it turns into this beautiful uh, elastic waistband. Final step is adding the leg bands. You're going to fold them right sides together and stitch and then turn them inside out when you're done and fold them in half, just like we did with the waistband. Perfect. And uh, don't forget to cut those seam allowances and press them as well. Now we're going to attach them to the leg. Okay, now do what I say, not what I did because I do not do it right in this video. This is exactly the same as attaching the waistband. You stick the pant leg inside the um, bottom band and then you're just gonna pin all the way around connecting it, those raw edges together and yeah, stitch. It's exactly the same as the waistband. First thing we're gonna do is take our two bodice pieces and sew a piece of ribbon or clear elastic, whatever you have, along the top shoulders uh, before connecting them and that stabilizes the shoulders so they don't stretch. Next, we take the two bodice pieces and put them right sides together and attach those shoulders. So I pin all the way along the shoulder there and then I'm just gonna stitch across. Once that's sewn, we're gonna work with a neckband. I chose the turtleneck because I like to be warm all the time. It's really not that tight either, so it's pretty comfy. So we're using that neckband, and again, we are sewing it right sides together, trimming it. There you go, we're folding it in half, just like the waistband and the leg bands. And now I'm going to mark all equal four corners on the neckband so I can attach it easier. So I have that seam in the middle, and then I have the two on the sides, that gives me the four points. Dividing things into four just makes it easier to connect for sure. So I'm doing the exact same with the neckline. You can see I'm folding it so I can find the middle part of the back. I'm transferring that to the front. And now I've got the four points um, on my bodice piece. So I'm just lining up the collar with those points. I know I want this to be the center and the seam is in the back. So I'm just going to do right sides to right side. There we go, and pinning. Once you have that front pin in, I go and attach all the four different pins that I put along the neckband first. It's gonna help you spread it out evenly. So I'm attaching it to the back next, and then I'll attach it on the shoulder seams. Yeah, and you're just gonna even it out throughout the whole way. When you're stitching it, you are gonna have to stretch the fabric a little bit, you'll see. Kind of as I'm pinning it, you'll see that I like stretch it a little bit, pin, because you want it to fit perfectly. So yeah, we're just gonna stitch uh, right along the neckline. So now we're left over this little seam allowance on the neckline, and we want it to lay flat. So just since it's sitting right there on our neck, so Tilly tells us to sew it down so I can I feel with my finger kind of so that it's laying flat facing the bodice and then I'm stitching over the top and look it creates kind of like a decorative top stitch. Okay now it's time for the sleeves. So we're gonna lay out our bodice piece right sides up like so and then we're gonna line up our arm pieces on the side also right sides up 
right in that pocket where the arms are going to be stitched. And first I find the middle of the sleeve by folding it in half, marking it, because I know that will be the part that I connect to the shoulder seam. So I fold it, so now it is right sides, right sides together. Then I'm just pinning along that entire arm line there. And then we're gonna stitch it, we're going to trim those seam allowances, and then we're gonna press it. Then you're gonna do the exact same thing to the other arm. That's gonna give you this beautiful looking tunic thing. <laughs> so at this point she says to pin it along this side and arm to see if you like how it fits. You know I like how it fits, so I'm moving right on to the split seam. I'm just folding over to see, okay, where is this gonna fall? I've decided to make the split, I believe it was 11 centimeters from the bottom of the fabric, the top piece. Uh, yep, and then I'm just gonna make a little snip as they suggested. They do tell you where to mark it on the pattern. I just always crop it shorter than that, so I kind of make up my own split seam. P.S. I always line up the underarm seam with the front and back piece before I snip or measure anything, so you want to make sure you are lining them up and they are in the correct spot. Okay, so I've now sewn the side and the arm to that split that I cut. So the next step is going to be to turn under the edge. This is like the hem. And I decided I wanted about three centimeters. I think she might recommend that too, I can't remember. And you can see I'm doing right sides together, measuring each one so it's three centimeters, and then pinning. I might deviate a little bit from her directions here, but whatever, this is a creative endeavor, people. So I do it on all four split seams, pin them, and now I'm going to stitch right where my finger is showing you, right there, short stitch. Okay, once it's all stitched, it's going to look like this. See, this is what it looks like when you stitch it inside out, but then you're going to pop it back. And now you've got this cute little corner. And look at that. The corner naturally folds back. You're going to stitch up that, around, and then down the other naturally occurring corner. That's also why it's important to make that little snip with your scissors earlier. So here is the example again on my sewing machine. Now I'm going to stitch down straight to the corner. Again, I'm not totally sure if this is exactly what she means in her directions, but it turned out really beautiful. Here's the front side and the back side. Looks great. So the final step, oh, almost final step, is just stitching the hem right along here. We already know it's the three centimeters, so I just pin it and stitch to get the bottom hem. The real final step is cuffing the sleeves or hemming them. All I do is I just fold them uh, up, as you can see here, I like fold it inside the sleeve and then I decide, like I think I decided I wanted like 11 centimeters. And then I measure it all around the sleeve, I pin it and then I turn it back like this and then I just top stitch there. And then I just trim the extra seam allowances. I like them to be a little thick though because I like my sleeves to hang kind of uh, heavy at the bottom, so. All right, let's check out the end result. If you wanna see some crazy and also lazy, then you should meet me and my friends. Even though we got no money, for sure it's so funny. Yeah, everything's better with them. We're just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. We don't worry about tomorrow. We just do, ooh, ooh, ooh. What we wanna do tonight. Waking up at sundown, the world's our playground. And we don't even have to pretend. Every time we're together it doesn't get better and every day is like a weekend we're just like ooh, ooh, ooh. We don't worry about so i thought i was gonna like nightmare better but honestly it's a tough call like they're totally different hopefully i've inspired you to make something comfy and cute please let me know if you have any questions at all too in the comments below and yeah just subscribe and come back next time and we'll see what our next project will be so